Hi, this is Joe again with another movie review. And this time we're going to be discussing movies that have been done by Marilyn Monroe. And we're only going to be discussing uh, three of them. So, so if you, you know, we're going to discuss your favorite Marilyn Monroe movie, I apologize in advance. Of course, Marilyn Monroe is one of the most famous movie sex symbols of all time. The majority of her films took place during the 1950s. And the last film took, came out the year that she died. <coughs> when she was allegedly killed by the Kennedys. In one of the conspiracy theories. And, and then her last full length film was The Misfits. And ironically, it was also the last film for. Or Gable. Like I said, we're going to discuss some three films, and these are the three films that I've seen all the way through. And I saw bits and pieces of Misfits and uh, another iconic film, The Seven Year Rich. And one of the films that really put them on the map, which was uh, Some Like a Hot. There was a black and white film. Well, I'm only going to be discussing three, and we'll be starting off with, I want to say, the most iconic uh, movie role, other than the Seven Year Rich, that is Diamond Before Blast, which came out in 1953 and also stars with Jane Russell, which, you know, she was just as attractive as Marilyn Monroe was, but she was a brunette, and Marilyn Monroe was close to the blonde. Of course, this is a stereotypical movie role. So playing, you know, a dumb blonde. And of course, she was far from stupid. And in reality, but in this movie, she plays with Longsaw and Jane Russell, who plays two showgirl singers. Who, for the majority of the movie, or the crews going from United States to. Paris. And of course, along the way, remember we'll get uh, our characters engaged, and her fiance's father, who didn't trust her for, for Adam, hired a private investigator to tell her around. And the private investigator happens to fall in love with the Jane Russell character. And of course, along the way, they meet this rich British. Snob, who gave uh, Marilyn Monroe a, a uh, tiara. And of course, the wife, put, uh, the guy's wife, puts in a, a robbery claim, and then they have a little trial about it. And the uh, tiara gets returned. And of course, they get off. But along the way, while they were still stuck at first, they did the most famous, or Mary Monroe does the most famous scene, the most famous act of the whole film. And of course, singing the song Diamonds of Girl's Best Friend. And of course, which is on the back of the, of the DVD, if you, could, if you could see it. There's a part of that, you know, the famous scene there with Diamond, Diamonds of Girl's Best Friend. And of course, that scene was spoofed about some 30 years later, 31 or 32 years later by Madonna when she did her uh, video for a song Material Girl. She spoofed that scene in that in her video. And that video put Madonna on the map as well. Because like I said she spoofed, she spoofed the Diamonds of Girls Best Friends scene for a video Material Girl. And that's why Review for Gemma before Blast. The next film that we're going to be discussing also came out not the same year as Gemma before Blast in 1953, which is Niagara. Now, to me, of the three films that we're going to be discussing on this on this video, this one's my favorite one out of the three because it's you know a really good suspenseful. This is a special movie, even though it's only 
an hour and a half. So, you know, these movies are pretty short. It's not even two. These three films are not even an hour and a half long. And plus, this movie plays never know as a femme fatale, really. Who tries to make her husband go crazy because she has a lover on the side and figures if she tries her husband crazy enough she would go she will spend the rest of her life with her lover who is on the cover with her of course in the meantime there's two other uh, people involved in another couple one of those played by Gene Peters who was just as hot as Marilyn Monroe was back, you know, at the time. And at least in this movie, you see her in the bikini and not Marilyn Monroe, which is a shame. But anyway, uh, this other couple is up in Niagara Falls, you know, for the delayed for a delayed honeymoon, and they somehow they get mixed up with Marilyn Monroe and her husband. And of course, you do see some of the sights of Niagara Falls, and I've been to some of the sights that was featured in the film. So this is why I like like the movie so much. You can see the rapids, you can see this little tram, like this, the Roosevelt Island tram in New York. Something like that. And I actually have an actual picture of that. First you see they're going through the tunnel. You see the Niagara Falls underneath the tunnels. I did that. You see the main and mist, I've done that. So 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 some of the things that I've actually done were featured it was like almost three years later I, di I did it was featured in Niagara Falls and it was featured in the movie Niagara so of course what happens is, is that the husband was initially found was played by Joseph Kahn he was actually found dead but the one who and I'm going to give away you know the ending he never saw this Niagara I thought it was a very good, you know, special film. And I think of, the, of all the movies I've seen at the moment, the you know, one that I like the most because she plays somebody with a brain in her head. And that is mindless you know, blonde or dumb blonde. So, I, guess, so I really enjoy it and it proves that Mama Mo can actually act. You're seeing her in Niagara. But, uh, I do. I also do like the Gene Peters role because usually uh, when they have someone else, another you know beautiful woman playing alongside Marilyn Monroe, they usually in the background have a very small role and a very much line that that has really nothing to do with the, with the plot. But Gene Peters has something to do with the plot. She's, she's essential to it. So which is you know. Well, yeah, the man Monroe would actually have another beautiful woman, you know, working with her. He did with John before Blanche with um, Jane Russell. But Jane Russell was way more of a established actress at that time than Man Monroe was in 1953. But of course, after that, very rarely does Man Monroe want to work with another, have another hot woman on the set in the same movie with her. Usually she wants to be the one woman in, in just about every one of her films. Uh, and that's the case with the next one I'm going to be discussing, which, you know, which is, came out in 1956, Stop. And for some reason, a lot of Marilyn Monroe fans and a lot of Marilyn Monroe critics consider this movie to be the best acting job that Marilyn Monroe has done. Uh, this one. Uh, but it also has stars Don Murray in his first role. And of course, it also has a small role by Don Murray's actual fiance, Hope Lang, who plays another blonde uh, girl in the film. And Marilyn Monroe got a little miffed over the fact that there was another blonde in the film. But unfortunately, she doesn't have all that much uh, to do. She plays the, the daughter or the niece of. The woman who runs the bus stop, you know, Grace's diner. But the, you know, the basic plot of this movie is that there's this cowboy, playing with Don Murray, who goes 
from Count of from Montana to Phoenix for his rodeo. And he's there with his, as you can see, his mentor, protector. And next, across the street, or next door to that hotel room, was this bar. And I remember all the way to this bar. And and the and the vent and the mentor who played her name named Verge. It's Virgil, I guess, but I ever call him Verge. And it says oh you're twenty one years old now, you it's time for you to maybe find a girl that's probably selling now. You're not a kid anymore. And so they go to the uh this bar and Don Murray sees a man of Monroe singing, which is of course the scene that's cover on the cover of the video and he instantly falls in love with us. Oh that's the girl I want to marry. He is he is the one that her to be the girl that wants to marry. And of course the girl is reluctant because the girl's more you know, Monroe is more experienced. And he and she's been you know fooling around since she's about like twelve or thirteen years old. And of course really never you know Never been with the girl, or has never had it, even a set, even a girlfriend before. So, as I think of one line with Marilyn says, Oh, I never had one of those before. Me, of course, a virgin, you know, she never had a virgin before. Been with a virgin, been with a guy who has no experience with the girls. So, of course, he decides to, well, the Murray character drags her to the Wario. And he easily wants to marry her at the Wario. And meanwhile, Mary goes and says to him, I can't marry this guy, this guy's a nut. And so what she does is she decides to run, run off. But of course, Don Murray grabs her. He actually laughs with her. This is you know, the funniest scene, I think, in the whole film. And he, and he uh, drags her on the bus. Of course, at the bus, of course, the furniture gets stuck in Reese's diner. And of course, they, of course, she wants to wait for another bus at the bus stop. Of course, Grace tells her, look, there's not going to be any buses getting through because all those, the highways closed. All the streets are closed because of all the snow. And of course, they close so the clouds get through. And of course, they're all stuck in Grace's diner. And of course, Don Murray comes in and he says, Where are you going? Get your suitcase back on the bus. And of course, the bus driver gets annoyed, saying, I don't like somebody who's bullying people. You're bullying her. And he goes, Oh, this is you know, not your business and all that type of thing. And two of them get into a, a fight outside the diner. Which, of course, he had a couple of good one liners just before the fight. And of course, Don Murray loses. He lost the fight. So of course, he has to go around and apologize to everybody. And you had this big scene where he apologized to man and Mo and said, "Well, I let you go." You know, I understand that you are not in love with me, but I feel you the. I don't care how you got where you are to this point. I don't care how you got here. I don't I love you the way you are now. And of course, man, all, the whole sweet one asks, and she says, Oh, that's the sweetest thing that anyone has ever said to me. And of course, when he says that, then her man and all falls in love with him. And they get back, they go on the bus together, they get in the movie, and the bus drives off, and that's how the movie ends. <laughs> but, you know, a very nice movie. Too bad we, we're never going to see a sequel to any of these movies. Uh, particularly bus stop, because I'd like to know what, you know, particularly a bus stop was going to happen with these people. But Marilyn Monroe and Don Murray character. But bus stop came out about six years before Marilyn Monroe was, why well, I feel she was killed. And if you don't believe where I gained this from, there was a video on YouTube that was based, there is a 1992 special called the Mariners Files, hosted by Bill Bixby, a live television 
uh, show in 1992. You can look up on YouTube. It's about an hour and a half long. And it's a good show. It gives a good argument on how possibly the Kennedys might have killed Mount Monroe. That might, you know, my little review here with Mount Monroe films. Like I said, if I didn't get to your favorite one, I apologize for it. Because I already over discussing the movies that I've seen all the way through. So, so I apologize again for not discussing your favorite one. Like, uh, How Many Millionaire, another one, so called classic that Marilyn Monroe did, or The Seven Year Rich. Matter of fact, when Marilyn Monroe did The Seven Year Rich, she was married to Dima Joe DiMaggio at that time. And DiMaggio was once said, when she did the famous scene where her dress gets blown up by the some great uh great and he and he was so angry that the and how he was subjecting her to all, to all this stuff to make her more sexual to the audience. And of course he got mad he wanted her off the movie. But thankfully she wasn't pulled off the movie. And not so long after that they got divorced. Because he was so jealous that, that people are, you know, are being trying to grab her and everything else. Because he was, she was such a sex symbol that time. Like I said, that's all my memorable uh, movies review. And please like the video, please comment on it. And please uh, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.